there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing some Halloween DIYing with me today? Come on in. Let's get started. to you my last four Halloween DIYs for 2022. Now I'm not much of a Halloween decor DIYer, but this year I did want to add some Halloween decor to my front porch and today's DIYs are for just that. These are four more DIYs that are quick, easy, budget friendly, that really pack that Halloween punch that I think you'd love to add to your front porch. So I'm going to quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it. And let me show you what I have in store for you for today for these last four Halloween DIYs for 2022. Let's get started. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. For this DIY, I dug through my plaque stash, pulled this one out. It's a pretty old one. To the back side of this plaque, because it is a blank canvas, I'm gonna give it a nice good coating of some Mod Podge because what am I gonna cover this with? I'm gonna cover it with some burlap. Why do I like to cover plaques with burlap? I feel like burlap adds texture and I love the texture of burlap. You can skip this step and just simply move on to the next one, which would be painting the plaque but it's gonna give it a different look and it's gonna add personality to it. So I say go the extra step and just add the burlap. You'll be much happier. You'll have a better outcome. When adding burlap to a plaque, once you place it down on the Mod Podge, you are gonna to wanna to go in with a second coat of Mod Podge over the top of the burlap. It's gonna absorb that Mod Podge, so it's gonna take a bit of it, but you're gonna have a better outcome because it's gonna stiffen your burlap, it's gonna adhere perfectly onto your plaque, and it's gonna make it easier to, wait for it, remove the excess burlap. Because you use Mod Podge, Mod Podge stiffens the burlap, which in turn makes it easier to cut off that excess burlap and it's gonna stop it from fraying. So you're gonna get those nice, clean, perfect edges. And I'm just using a safety cutter and a nice fresh blade and using the plaque as a guide. And just like that, all the burlap is off and we are ready to give this a nice good coating of, yes, my rustic orange. This would be Hello Hobbies Orange with a touch of dark brown just to rustic it up. For those of you who are new to my channel, I don't do bright colors. I like nice muted rustic colors. So if you just add a drop or two of brown to your colors, it will mute it out and it will darken it up and it'll give it that nice aged distressed look. I thought I'd step out of my comfort zone, try something new, maybe add some stitching to the edges of this plaque to finish it off. <laughs> this corrugated tin cat is a must for this DIY and so are these metal words. Haunted, spooky, and beware. I'm going to be using beware and spooky. And to these three pieces, I'm going to give them a nice good coating of some black chalk paint and that chalk paint would be ink by Waverly. I like to apply the paint to these metal pieces with a sponge dabber because it goes on thicker, it goes on even, and you're free of brush strokes. I find when you use a brush, it comes out very uneven and it's hard to get rid of the strokes, but if you use a sponge dabber, it's quicker, it's easier, and it gives texture. So I'm gonna do that to all three of these pieces. The stitching really brought this lucky black cat to life. I'm gonna add three or four Jenga blocks to the back of this cat because why? What do Jenga blocks do when you add them to a piece like this? It elevates it up off the plaque, which in turn adds dimension to your DIY. And to the back of these words, since a Jenga block won't really work because I want them elevated, if I use these small non-useful beads, well, I feel like they're non-useful because I never string any beads for a DIY with these small ones. I just wish that they would replace them with the bigger ones, but I guess if they did that, then I wouldn't have them to put on the back of these words. So maybe I don't wish they'd do away with them because I need them for today's DIY, haha. <laughs> so I'm gonna add these small beads, a few of them, to the back of these words so I can elevate 
these words too on this plaque, giving them, let's all say it, dimension. Dimension really does add so much to a DIY. If you were just to lay these words flat down on the plaque, you will see that there is a bit of a difference. And I really feel like doing small final touches like this take a DIY decor piece to the next level. Now, I'm not a huge Halloween decor person, but this piece is so stinking cute. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to take some of Dollar Tree's felt roll. You're getting three and three quarter inches by 48 inches long of felt. This felt, it's not the best felt. It's a bit on the thinner side, so I like to double it up when making my garden banners. So to make a garden banner, I take this top edge, fold it over about two inches to make a pocket so I could slip the garden rod through. Yeah, that. I like to add some weight to my banner. An easy way to do that is to pick up one of Dollar Tree's, what is this, a uh, table mat, right? A placemat, table mat, good golly Kelly. And I'm gonna hot glue it to the inside of my felt. And this is gonna add weight and it's gonna help it so it's not kind of flapping around and blowing around if you live in a windy area like I do. Yes, once I've got it all glued down, I'm gonna take and just pull over my felt and fold it over, closing up my banner. I'm gonna hot glue the felt closed on both sides and right along the top. Now it's time to put this together. I'm gonna hit the back of this plaque with a ton of hot glue. I'm using a high temperature glue gun. If you're using a low temperature, your plaque might fall off on a pretty hot day, but because this is a high temperature glue gun, it would take a pretty hot day for this glue to melt and the plaque to come off. I'm gonna place my plaque right there on my felt, making a garden banner. Let's go take a look at this. These wood stands are stands that I found at Michael's. They were on clearance for $10. Yep, folding wood stand, which means it's double-sided. I picked up about 10 of them. If you don't have one of these, you can pick up four of these Dollar Tree plaques. You're gonna need some jumbo popsicle sticks. You're gonna glue two of the plaques together side by side. Then you're gonna glue two more together side by side and you're going to stack the four plaques, giving you what would look very similar to the stand that I have. So this would be the way of doing it outside of using one of these folding stands and you're gonna get the same look. You're just gonna to have to lean it up against your house. Since I've got the folding stand, I've got several of them because I wanted to do one for each season or holiday. This one, since it's Halloween, I'm going with that candy corn theme, the yellow, orange, white, and black. So at the bottom, I'm gonna start off with the yellow and I am using some of Waverly's Maze. And there in the middle, this is candy corn, so I'm gonna go with some of that rustic orange. And each of these blocks of color, I am doing as even as I can. I'm not going the step of measuring because I feel like when you do a piece like this, the more imperfect it is, the more perfect it is. And so it just kind of adds personality to it, that homemade handmade touch that I like. And my candy corn sign, well, it's gonna to be topped off with some white. After I got a good couple coats on this sign, getting that coverage that I'm happy with, I'm gonna go back in where each of the colors meet. I'm gonna add another coat of paint, but when I add this paint, I'm gonna blend the two colors to give it that blended look so the line isn't so harsh. And I'm gonna do that with the white and orange and up there at the top with the orange and the yellow, making it a smoother transition from color to color. And to this candy corn sign, Let's add the word spooky, because why not? It's cute, right? And I'm gonna do that using a stencil. Stencils, they're a great alternative to a vinyl or a sticker. They're budget friendly and they're reusable. So it's a win-win. When I work with stencils, I like to use a spray adhesive on the back of them. Loctite has a repositionable lightweight spray adhesive that when you spray it on the back of your stencil, when you take that stencil off, it leaves no residue. What's great also about using a spray adhesive when you're working with your stencils is your stencil isn't gonna pull up as you're dabbing to where if you use a painter's tape, 
you get that stencil kind of moving around just a bit and you risk getting more bleedage. You can definitely get the job done using painter's tape, but you might need to go in and do a bit of fine tuning once you pull those stencils up. I like to use a sponge dabber when applying my paint to a stencil because it does help with the bleedage. You get a bit of texture and the coverage is, I would say, more even. Once the paint is good and dry, look for the satisfaction in this when we peel the stencil up. Oh my goodness. It's gonna come out just about perfect because why? Because we use the spray adhesive. Look at that. I love working with stencils. It's one of my favorite means to work with because it's cheap and it's budget friendly. And did I tell you? They're reusable. Oh yeah, I did tell you that, huh? Dollar Tree's got wood ornaments. They're DIY wood ornaments. I love them. I picked up these sets. You can see that I did use some of that spackling to fill in those pesky holes. And two, all four of these, yep, they're gonna get a good coating of Waverly's ink. Because it's Halloween. We need to add some contrast, some black to these DIYs. I did, I added stitching to these pieces. Didn't show you, cause once you've seen it in one DIY, it goes the same for all of them. And these cute pieces, I added a Jenga block to the back of because there weren't really any elevated pieces on this sign. And I feel like these pieces act like fun accent pieces to this spooky candy corn Halloween sign. Look at how fun that is. Quick, easy, budget friendly and it's gonna go perfect on my porch. Let's go take a look. My Halloween porch definitely needs a candy corn wreath, so I'm gonna do that using this floral board that you can get at Dollar Tree and some burlap. And guess what? I have this burlap in my stash, so it is a win for me. A very budget-friendly DIY. You can get this burlap at Walmart, I wanna say it's about $3.97 a roll. I'm gonna cut my pieces into six inch pieces, just like that. Ask me how many I cut, I couldn't tell you, I didn't count, but I am gonna cut several and yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna do that with the yellow and the orange. You know what, I didn't end up using the white, I just used the yellow and orange. You're gonna need some eight inch zip ties as well and you can get this pack at Dollar Tree in the tool section. I'm gonna feed my zip tie through two of the holes just like you see me doing here on this outside row of holes. Now, when I put my zip tie together, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way. I'm gonna do it just enough to keep it closed so I can slip the burlap through them. I found that placing the zip ties first was definitely the easier way to go. When I'm placing these, I'm going to put one zip tie in each hole, just as you see me doing here. So there should not be two zip ties in each hole as of yet. For this first row, you are going to want to place your zip ties just the way I'm doing it. Those six inch burlap pieces that we cut, we're going to gather them in the middle and just kind of twist and fold it in half just like so. Then it's gonna slide right in to our zip tie just like this and you're just gonna put about a half an inch in there. You're gonna tighten up that zip tie good and tight and it's gonna hold your burlap piece right on to the wreath board. And I'm gonna do that all the way around that outside edge. Now you see why I didn't count my pieces. And this here is what your wreath board should look like. You've got a space in between each burlap piece and that is how you want it. Now we're gonna skip a row and we're gonna go to that third row. We're gonna feed that zip tie through the hole, but in this row, we are going to feed the zip tie through each hole, if that makes any sense. Each hole is gonna have two zip ties because we don't want that space in between our burlap pieces. We're gonna get this wreath nice and full and it's gonna look amazing and so you just gotta do what I'm doing and you'll have the same outcome. 
and ta-da! Just like that, we've got our second row and you can see that there is no space in between each of the burlap pieces. Now for this next row, which would be the fourth row, I'm gonna feed the zip ties through each hole just like I did with the last row. So there will be two zip ties in each hole. And this will be our last row of burlap pieces that we are adding to this wreath. These wreaths are so super easy to do. They're budget friendly and the outcome is amazing. I love adding these to my front door. So I say go pick up a couple of these plastic wreath boards at Dollar Tree and make some wreaths for each of the seasons and holidays just like I am because they're fun. This row I'm gonna switch it up a bit and I'm gonna add some of the orange burlap. Remember, it's candy corn themed, yes. This homewood plaque is the perfect size for this wreath. I'm gonna flip it over because I don't need the home as much as I love the home. It's not gonna work for this Halloween one. I just need the back side. This is the perfect size for this wreath board. Dollar Tree does have a larger wood round, but it's way too big. So I'm just gonna go with this one. And with this one, it's gonna get a nice good coating of some white chalk paint. And it's gonna get this too. Surprise, surprise, creature of habit, enough said. These aluminum words that are attached to the wood base are one of my favorite pieces to incorporate into a DIY. In the beginning, I didn't buy them for a while because they were attached and I was kind of put off by the base. But then I realized that I really liked the font on these words and that I could easily incorporate them into my DIYs by adding some wood cubes to the back of them, which is going to elevate them, which is then going to what? Let's say it together, add dimension. So I went ahead, I painted it orange, and to this, yes, some stitching as well, just to make the word hello pop and give it more of that Halloween feel. These bat DIY pins, oh my word, these are perfect for this wreath, but I'm gonna remove the clothespin because I don't need it. I'm gonna give these cute little fellas a good coating of some black chalk paint. Guess what time it is? It's my favorite part of every DIY, putting this all together. I'm gonna place my hello word on my white plaque. I'm gonna add a couple of these bats to it. And then this plaque here is gonna go smack dab in the center of my burlap wreath. Now, I'm gonna forewarn you that I didn't press record when I hot glued this plaque to the wreath, but you will see it in the end and you will see that I did add a black raffia bow as well. Let's go take a look. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Davida Mitchell, who's bringing to us her recreation of my Dollar Tree DIY Arrow Halloween wall decor piece. Davida, thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. In the past, I've said that I'm really not much of a porch decor person, but this year I have really been making an effort to really decorate my porch for each of the seasons and the holidays. And although I'm not much of a Halloween person, I still feel like it's fun to decorate my porch for those trick-or-treaters that do come by trick-or-treating. I hope you all enjoyed these porch decor DIY ideas and I hope they brought you some inspiration. If you're looking for some inspiration for Christmas and you wanna get an early start on some of those DIYs, you can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.